your name became synonymous with Seinfeld. Yeah, I think yeah. with the, with the show. Yeah, and you wrote some of the most iconic episodes. You wrote? Did you write the Soup Nazi? Yeah, that was the first one. Right, and and in writing with uh, like and working with uh, Larry David. Yeah, you know the Soup Nazi. You're writing something. Wasn't that was that your um, idea? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. And if in fact it's it's a real place. It starts with your idea, and then Jerry and Larry and the rest of the writers turn it into an episode, right? But the idea, the thing that that usually kicks off an episode was you'd walk in and you'd pitch the two of them just like this. And I did, it was my first pitch. I uh, worked for Dave for five years, knew nothing about sitcom writing, but they, they were just like, come tell us stories about living in New York. We've been out here for a long time. We want to know what life is like back there, you know? And I pitched uh, uh, five or six ideas. They, they had those looks on their face as I'm pitching. And I'd been told if they laugh, you'll uh, get an episode on. But if they're not laughing, if they're just kind of looking at you like you guys are looking at me now, <laughs> oh. <laughs> they'd go like this. They, you, you, you keep pitching because you don't have anything yet, right? So I right. pitched, I pitched, I pitched, nothing. I'm kind of flop sweating. And Larry goes, uh, what else you got? What, what else is happening in New York? <laughs> <laughs> Where do you go to lunch? Something, some question like that. I said, well, uh, you know, uh, we eat at this place called the Soup Nazi. Larry starts laughing for the first time in the pitch. He goes, what? <laughs> I go, this, they call him the Soup Nazi because if you don't order your soup correctly, then he yells at you. And he goes, well, why do you keep going there? And he goes, nobody knows. The, the soup is really good. They put up with the abuse. And now the two of them are dying. And, and I'm very confused. They, <laughs> they go, eh, that's your episode. That's the one. Soup Nazi. Perfect. He'll go, get out. A very such a confusing pitch. I walked out not even understanding what had happened because it wasn't anything that you planned on going in and pitching. Yeah, it was just <laughs> like telling them a story about the weird guy at the Dunkin' Donuts this morning. Before you know, it was such a it was. And they said a, go write the. They said go write the soup Nazi, and I went great. And I walked out, and I went to Gamble and Pross, two of the writers on the show, had got me there, got me on this on staff. And so they said to write the Soup Nazi. And they go, that's great. Yeah, we heard the laugh and you sold the show. Tom talks like that. He talks like a cartoon character. <laughs> and, I, and I said, okay. I go, he goes, just turn it into an episode. He goes, you've got the shred. Now you've got the, the, little, uh, the, the little thread of it, the little bit of it. You've got to plot it out and figure it out. And that's where the work started. You know. And so, then so you wrote it. And then No, they, you outlined back then. You would outline up till the, just the act break, right? So you had to figure out, okay, here's this place that, that you know, who am I in the story? I, I'm a couple of different guys. I'm Jerry in the beginning going, what? There's a soup guy? You have to order it right? They go, I know how to order soup. There's George, who's a skeptical uh, Kramer. We thought, well, maybe he'd be a friend of the soup Nazi. He's an eclectic, and so is the soup Nazi, so they'll get along. Elaine will hate him based on principle. And you started kind of outlining the scenes of the story and what's going to be funny about it and you know there were lots of holes but at some point you would then maybe a month later bring larry and jerry in and take them through the board here's you know here's what so you got cards up on a board and are you no 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 dry erase no cards everything has to be dry erase everything's color coded kind of dry erase marker and you'd walk them through beats Jerry and George uh, talk about the soup Nazi. George gets rejected. Uh, maybe later on, Elaine beats the soup Nazi. We don't know how. You know, you just kind of plot it out. No line, no no dialogue, just story points. Maybe uh, no soup for you is probably the only line of dialogue I know at that point. And then, you know, in the meantime, even before Larry and Jerry there, you're bringing in the other writers. They're helping you with yours. You're helping. With, and it, it was, a you know, a real team effort. But there were never there was never a moment, at least that season, where we got a bunch of writers in a room and wrote. You took the script as far as you could take it. You went to script and wrote it. And then are Larry you hired Jerry, or are they buying the script? Are you hired on? I'm on staff. Yeah, I'm on staff. Based on that pitch? No. The pitch came before. The pitch was at Larry's house uh, a few months before where he said to pitch some ideas. Uh, right. It was my second time pitching the show. The, the at his house. At his house, yeah, yeah. So then how do you get hired from that? How do you get hired on staff? Well, he hired me in that moment. Oh, from the pitch. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, a year previous, yeah. 
I, I went out to Larry's house and I pitched a bunch of ideas and they hired uh, Bergen Schaefer. They only had one spot, so everybody was vying for one spot. The next year, they, they called me back. It was, you know, it really came out of a, an uncomfortable moment with Jerry in the elevator at Letterman where uh, it was Friday. It was a bad week. I was burned out. I was tired. And Jerry was on the show that night. And Dave was up on the 14th floor, right? So right. Jerry and Dave had been chatting. We're coming down the elevator. I get on on 12, and there's the guy who just didn't hire me, like maybe three or four months ago, didn't hire me. And he's talking to Mary Connolly, the segment producer, and I'm like, I know these people are going to lose. They, they've, they've talked as much as they can talk, and they're going to turn to me at some point, and I don't want to talk to Jerry Seinfeld right now because I'm going to say something I'm going to regret. <laughs> like, why didn't you hire me? And sure enough, fifth floor, Mary goes, this is Spike First and one of our writers. And Jerry goes, huh, didn't you do a submission for us? And I go, yeah, yep, yep, I did. And he goes, whatever happened to that? And I go, shouldn't you know that? <laughs> <laughs> and then I went, oh, did I just say that to Jerry Seinfeld? <laughs> and I walked out and, you know, just like, God damn it, I'm never going to get hired on this show. Weirdly, after that, I got asked back to come <laughs> and do another submission, flew out to Larry's house. Uh, do, you, do you ever do you go to La where Larry lived at the time in Pacific Palisades, this giant, beautiful mansion, get brought in by the maid into the kitchen, and I'm just standing there. His little dog comes out, and I go to pet it, and it scares the dog, and it just wets the floor. <laughs> and then Larry walks in. Oh, oh, you made the dog pee. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's, uh, let's go back then. It's okay. I'll get that. I'll get that. So that's how that pitch started. <laughs> 